Okay, the rate expression. Well, there's an equation at the top and the rate expression's in yellow. Now, notice that the coefficients don't have to and probably won't equal the exponents in the rate equation. No, it just, that's the equilibrium constant you're thinking of. If you think the, the coefficient should re be reflected in the equation there. Uh, it's from experiments or from the mechanism, if you had the mechanism. That's how you get those uh, orders of reactions, those little exponents. So what's the effect of the rate constant if I double A? No effect. If I triple B... The rate constant gets three times. Is no, one going to, is no one going to stop me? No, 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 no. You've fallen into the IP trap. Nothing changes the rate constant except temperature or a catalyst, which I don't think is on the syllabus. The rate constant, it's constant. So let's change the question. What's the effect on the rate? Okay, so doubling A, there's no effect because A isn't in the rate equation. It has no effect. If I triple B then you'll notice that b is raised to the power 1, and that the effect of that is going to be to triple the rate. It's a directly proportional relationship there. And if I half c, well, that squared sign means that it's going to give me a quarter. So the rate is going to be quartered. So four times slower. All right, then. Let's look at uh, the next one. Kind of a medium-level question. So the trick here is that maybe you see the 2 and the 3 and think that that's important in answering the question. It's not. Those coefficients have nothing to do with the rate. You've got to look at the rate equation to find out about the rate. So A has a little 1 and C has a little 2, so that's the order of reaction. So since C has an order of reaction of 2, that's bigger than, than A, so it's going to have more influence on the rate. OK, so let's actually work out the rate. We'll put the numbers in. The rate constant multiplied by the concentration of A, multiplied by the concentration of B, and the concentration of C. Now, don't forget the squared. So that gives me 9. Two sig figs. And the units for rate are always concentration per unit time. <laughs> a couple of years ago, instead of putting seconds, they put minutes. And pretty much everyone lost a point. Now, they won't put big M, that's too simple. They'll put moles per decimeter cubed. Ooh. All right, then, so this is a, a trickier one. So let's find the concentration of NO2. So just put the numbers in. And so that gives me the concentration of NO2 squared... 9. Okay, that wasn't so tricky. Ah, well, this was part 1. Look at part 2. So the concentration of nitrogen dioxide is 3 molar. Concentrations are in molar, or moles per decimeter cubed. Let's just keep that number up there. Now, for the next question, that's kind of strange. The rate was found to be that. Did the conditions change? Well, what's the question? Well, we've got concentration of nitrogen dioxide, we've got concentration of chlorine, and I've got the rate. So secretly the question's asking me work out K. Well, I did that on a piece of paper somewhere else. And K comes out at 15. Now before it was 1.5. Now as you remember, the only thing that changes the rate constant is temperature, or, or a catalyst, and that's not really IB. So that must mean the temperature's changed. Now, how did it change, up or down? Well, the rate constant increased, so that makes sense to say the temperature's increased, doesn't it? It's a faster reaction. And how does temperature increase rate? More collisions per unit time and higher energy collisions. And we're done.